Off a day, I want to thank our Chief Justice Carbazito for being patient with us and presiding over our inauguration uh, two-day festivities. But um, Sidus Masi, CJ. I want to say buenas and half a day to my colleagues, Manilu and Manilau, our friends, our family, our neighbors, our colleagues, and the proud people of Guam. I stand here today and I think about all the great leaders that have graced these hallowed halls, who have cleared the path for us with their acts of service, leadership, and fearlessness, and they continue to inspire us. In March of 1949, concerned about limited legislative powers, the Guam Congress staged an act of defiance in protest against the naval government, drawing national attention in its quest for self-governance, which has since become known as the walkout. Assembly Speaker Antonio B. Wampat stated in a letter to the Naval Governor Pownall in 1949, the members of the House of Assembly consider that the powers of the three branches of government must be defined. It is further believed that only then can you and your staff, the legislative and judicial branches of the Naval Government, assure the people of Guam of the full functioning of the democratic processes of government. In the meantime, the members of the Assembly do not feel that they can appear to have the status of a legislative body without the proper powers to carry out that function." Unquote. And every legislature since that walkout has inherited the responsibility to build upon the progress of our predecessors, who fought for more legislative authority for what was at one time an advisory body to a plenary power. And we must continue to embody their spirit today and every day forward by diligently and responsibly exercising our authorities of oversight and policy making. This beautiful Guam Congress building symbolizes the determination of those before us who fought for self-governance so that we are empowered with greater authority over our land and all our resources and the administration of laws that affect our lives. Henceforward, we have the privilege, colleagues, of doing the people's work in this very significant and historical place, a thought not lost upon me as I entered these doors every day for the past five years, six years. It is incumbent upon us in the 37th Guam Legislature to uphold their legacy, to promote opportunity and the prosperity of all the people of Guam. Today, I'm proud to share this room with 14 colleagues, some returning from the previous term, some returning to the legislature from prior terms, as well as those who have taken elected office for the first time. It takes courage to make the decision to seek public office and to serve in this capacity will require our self-sacrifice and complete dedication to equality. I thank you for your courage and for your willingness to serve our people. You have my utmost respect. The newly elected senators swearing in before us, or earlier, to, uh, two days ago, who have been sworn in, have promised and now committed to deliver on a safer Guam, education and prioritizing our children, affordable housing, universal health care, greater access to health care, sustainability and environmental conservation and stewardship economic diversification and support for Guam's businesses, to reduce poverty, to, for better access to resources for disabilities, to combat corruption, to combat drugs, for transparency and accountability, to restore pride back into our community, and to rein in government frivolous spending, and to lower the BP, to continue the BPT and an equal playing field for the businesses on Guam, to the reduced BPT, to reduce government red tape, to fix procurement, to make, continue to make progress, fighting inflation, creating jobs, dedicating resources to the Department of Agriculture for animal control, continuing to improve our roads, and most of all, for balanced government powers. With a combination of life experience, legislative experience, business acumen, public service, statesmanship, boldness, and fresh perspectives on long-standing issues, I expect no less than that they will deliver. 
And as a body, if we are to accomplish this bold and diverse agenda, we must work together in a bipartisan effort. And we must place personal politics aside and engage in healthy debate based on truth and facts to find long-term solutions to many of the issues that have plagued our island all these years. More and more every day, families are struggling with the decision to leave Guam in search of a better life. And as duly elected public servants, we must address this crisis head on and do everything in our power to bring that better life here for those we have sworn to serve. This 37th Guam legislature must shift our strategy from recovery to prosperity. And colleagues, in a matter of weeks, we'll be receiving the executive budget request for fiscal year 2024. We will have to roll up our sleeves and find ways to not only ensure the financial health of the government of Guam, but to enact policy to promote the health and well-being of all our families, to provide resource assistance for residents most at risk, to provide better training and opportunities for those who are working, access to better health care here and safer communities. Through conservative budget, budgeting and the efforts of our appropriations chair, the Guam legislature has realized excess revenues every year since fiscal year 2019 of approximately 117 million based on audited surpluses and another 103 million surplus for unaudited fiscal year 2022. This conservative approach to budgeting and spending has benefited not only the government of Guam by eliminating the deficit, but allowed for the stabilization of Guam's economy. Additionally, this body has made progress in ensuring the protection of Guam's rich land and cultural resources through efforts on many fronts including reform, the allocation of better resources for environmental protection, and the fight for, for transparency of the utilization of federal excess lands and federal funds. And this newly elected body must take the progress that has already been made, use it as a roadmap, and apply common sense and practical approaches to find even better solutions for what lies in store for us during this term. Additionally, we must be unwavering in our commitment to hold robust oversight over the agencies charged with executing our, the mandates of the laws of Guam, as well as longstanding policy enacted by those who've come before us. As your speaker, I resolve to continue working to protect the power of the people to continue to restore the people's faith in their government, to bring transparency to our process, and to practice truth and justice, so that the best ideas and solutions can be born from the 37th Guam legislature. So today is the first day of this short two-year legis two legislative term, and I'm ready to work with all of you to make Guam a home where the hopes and dreams of our families are realized, and this will be the true measure of our work here. I want to thank my colleagues for their vote of confidence in me, and I know, um, I just hope that uh, going forward, it hasn't been a smooth pass, but I'm, I'm hoping and praying that going forward, we were going to be able to Work together genuinely for the people of Guam. Sidus Masi Todos Hamzu, Kusesi Hain Gaga Gao Ham and Zu, Nan Tazuzuti Ham Motna, Pada in Minagahi, Danny Minalekta. Sidus Masi.